How's it going YouTube? It's Sean here and I am back today to give you guys a review of the Nike React Element 55 in the black and solar red colorway. These dropped on September 29th for 130 US dollars or $175 here in Canada. The official colorway for this shoe is black, solar red and cool grey and I was lucky enough to pick these up at one of the local Nike stores in downtown Toronto. So to put it bluntly, these React Element 55s are a more economical and less premium version of the React Element 87s. Silhouette wise they look identical but the only changes comes with the materials that's used between the two different shoes. So jumping straight into it, taking a closer look at the upper. So the upper of these React Element 55s is constructed using this sort of nylon mesh material. This nylon upper is quite sturdy and as a result it doesn't really stretch that much. In addition, comparing this upper to the 87 upper, you'll see that the 87 upper is translucent, whereas the 55 upper is completely opaque. Throughout the upper, you'll notice that there's these horizontal lines running across the width of the shoe. So this is evident at the very bottom of the toe box, and then right at the edge right next to the swoosh. This is done purely for cosmetic reasons, and it doesn't actually support your foot any better. At the very base of the shoe where the laces are, we have this U-shaped pattern. This is constructed out of a black synthetic suede. Running up the center area of the shoe where the eyelets are, this feels like a felt-like material. And then stitched underneath us, we have these black nylon lace loops. As for the tongue, so I was a little bit disappointed, this feels very, very cheap. It feels like a single piece of felt cut out in this unique shape, and it has this pinwheel logo on the interior, and this Nike React branding on the exterior. Comparing the tongue on these ones to the tongue on the 87s, these ones feel way more premium, way more refined, and at least it looks like Nike put in a lot more work to construct this tongue. Moving on from that though, overlaid on top of the tongue we have your laces, which in this case isn't the trail-like laces found on the 87s, instead we just have a simple rope style lace in black. On the mid panel of the lateral side here we have this oversized Nike swoosh done in solar red, and as you can see on the medial side, this side does not have a swoosh. As we move towards the back heel, you'll see that there's this fuse or tape-like material in black, and then in the center we have this hit of suede with this solar red Nike swoosh along with a black nylon pull tab. Copying the back heel, we also have this black TPU heel counter with this Nike React branding found on the lateral side. As for the insoles, so these don't come with the special cork insole that's found on the 87s. Instead, this is just your standard black Nike insole with Nike branding on the heel in solar red. So the upper of these React Element 55s sits atop this full-length React foam midsole. In this case, the midsole is colored in cool gray. And identical to the 87s, we also have these indentations throughout the midsole, along with these rubber plugs that are colored in solar red, and this is found throughout. Flipping this over to the bottom, so this also remains unchanged. So this is your React outsole with Nike React branding found in the middle, and then we have this overlay of rubber found on both the forefoot and the bottom heel. From a sizing standpoint, so my feet measures as a true size 10, slightly on the wider side. So for the React Element 87s, I got these in a size 10, but for the React Element 55s, I got these ones in a size 10 and a half. I feel like the upper of the shoe is a bit thicker and it's not as flexible as the 87s. So when I tried on the size 10, it was definitely a little bit snug around the toe box. Going up the half size to a 10 and a half made me feel much more comfortable in these shoes. To give you guys a point of reference, I'm also a size 10 and a half in other Nike models like the Air Max 1, the Air Max 97, the Epic React Flyknit, and the Vapor Max. In terms of comfort, I've heard people say that the 55 isn't as comfortable as the 87s, but for me, I gotta disagree. When I put them on feet, I honestly couldn't tell the difference. In either case, the 55 or the 87, they both feature this full-length React foam midsole, and to me at least, they felt exactly the same. So with that said, this shoe is gonna be very, very comfortable. It's not gonna feel as flexible and form-fitting to your foot as the 87s, but if you guys aren't a fan of this translucent upper, but you still want the comfort that this shoe gives, then this one is a very good alternative. So with all that being said, now let me lace up these React Element 55s and show you guys how these look on feet.
In terms of Nike's strategy, it seems to be the status quo where they drop like the first version, making it super limited and super sought after, but eventually they release a ton of colorways and spin-off models of that very first model. So you've kind of seen that happen with the Vapor Max, with the Air Max 270s, and then now, in my opinion at least, we're gonna be seeing the same thing happen with the React Element line. So between the two, I personally would pay the premium price to get the more luxurious materials and upgrades found on the 87s. But if what you're after is comfort and you don't really care for the bells and whistles, then these 55s will do the trick. So let me know in the comments down below what you guys think of the Nike React Element 55. If you guys like this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Give me a follow on Instagram at esco8, check out my Twitter at sean.go, and visit my website at seangoca So until next time, Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and I'll catch you guys in the next one.